In this presentation, we will enter purchase orders into QuickBooks Pro 2019. Here, for more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. We are on the home page. We currently have the open windows open. The open windows can be opened by going to the view tab and the open windows list. We are now going to be entering a purchase order into the system. We can see that the purchase order is going to be part of the vendor section. So when we consider the vendor section, we're starting off here with the purchase order. And that's going to be if we have a merchandising company. Note that if we don't have a merchandising company where we're going to be buying and selling merchandise, we don't really have this upper level of the vendors. All we're really going to have are the bills that we pay and then we pay bills. When we are in a system where we're going to purchase inventory, mark up that inventory, receive the inventory, and enter the bill for that inventory that will then be paid, we'll see this upper kind of section that we will have here. Really nice to see this flowchart to see what is going on with those sections. Now, the purchase order is like a special document. It's a little bit different than just about any other form that you're going to see on the home page, and that is because it's really only an information form, no journal entry involved in it which is really confusing because any other thing that we use, all these other forms are used to create the financial statements. Every other form, we will, we will select it, we'll enter data, we'll check the financial statements, and we'll see that the financial statements will change by the fact that we entered a form. The purchase order will be different because it's really only a request for us to uh, receive inventory. The other thing that you need to be careful and aware of with the purchase order is it only really applies to larger companies typically because if we're a small company say that we purchase something and resell it then if we're going to purchase something on like amazon or if we purchase something from a store if we went to office depot or something like that uh, or or any kind of purchase situation for a small company typically we will go and purchase and we will pay at the point of purchase then when when we receive the goods at the end of of that process we will have already paid for them and so if that's the case, then we're not going to have a purchase order. But if we're a larger company, then oftentimes the, the person purchasing has more power. In other words, we can ask for the, the inventory to be shipped for, from us. We can imagine if we're going to have a company from China that's going to ship us uh, the inventory that we have, have, uh, we're asking for, then we could ask with a purchase order, we would like this inventory they ship it to us we check it make sure that it's in accordance with the purchase order requests and then pay for it and so in that case we would have a purchase order so just be aware that if we're a company that pays for the inventory before <laughs> before um, we receive it we probably will not have a purchase order if we are a company who are able to ask for the goods uh uh with a purchase order receive them check them see that they're in accordance with the purchase order that we had filled out and then pay for them then that's when the purchase order would be in place so uh, and that's also why there's no journal entry related to the purchase order when we enter the purchase order uh, if we can imagine we're, we're purchasing something from china our, our inventory we're just going to basically say uh, here's you know here's our request for these materials we haven't received the materials so we can't record inventory we haven't paid for the materials because and so we can't record the payment uh, so there's no actual journal entry it's just going to be an internal document it will however help us to link to the receiving reports and the recording of the bill so quickbooks will know it and it will help us to link through the process of recording inventory at the point in time inventory is received Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a purchase order. So we're going to go into the purchase order here and uh, select this item. We're going to need a, a vendor. It looks uh, a lot like a, a bill or, or maybe an invoice. We're going to need uh, the vendor here. It's going to be a shipping uh, document. We're going to need the date. And then we're going to need the items because we're, we're purchasing items that we are going to then resell, in our case, guitars. So the vendor for us is going to be Epiphone. Now, if you just start typing it in there, it'll then populate. I'm going to delete that. Also, if you select the drop-down, we'll have a list of vendors. We don't have a very long list, so we can select them. If you have a long list, typing them in there is easier to do. So we're going to say Epiphone, and we're going to say Ship to. 
Uh, also note that this information over here is um, giving you some added uh, information. You could uh, get, hide this information by hitting this little arrow here, and that'll give you a little bit more real estate on the screen. So let's do that now. <laughs> and then I'm going to leave uh, the, the drop ship to you. I'm going to leave that blank. The template, we're going to keep the template here. You could customize uh, your purchase orders and... Uh, and make them more custom to your uh, your business. We're going to say that the date is going to be, I'm going to say plus one. It's on the 11th. It's actually going to be the 12th that we want. Instead of typing in the entire date, I'm just going to hit the plus button and that'll move it to the 12th. Uh, the purchase order number I'm going to say is 1001. That's where we're going to start our purchase orders. And, and then it'll renumber from there. Vendor Epiphone, uh, and uh, we need the ship to, which is going to be our address. It'd be nice to have their address. Uh, we may need that. Depends on how we uh, deliver the purchase order, uh, whether we're going to you know, mail it to them or email it to them. And then we're going to have our address. That's where uh, they're going to ship the uh, goods to, so that's necessary. Then we need the items. Now, these are items that we're, we're purchasing all the time, so we already have them listed. We know what the cost is. We've already put them in place. Where did we put them in place? If, if we select this drop down, here's our items. And we're selecting this uh, ELP. That's going to be an Epiphone Les Paul that we want to get shipped to us. Now, where did this information come from? How did the rate get there? It's in our lists. So if we go to lists up top, we went to item list. And the Epiphone is uh, here. So this is the one that we filled out and we entered that data into the items. The items are driving the purchase orders. So then I'm going to go back to the create invoice. So this is all being generated. It's already in the system because we have them in our item list because we purchase this item often. Uh, then we're going to say the quantity is one. We're just going to purchase one of these at a rate of 400. The customer field is going to be optional because it could be possible that we ordered this for a particular customer or maybe we just ordered it for the store. If we order it for a particular customer, it's nice to put that into the customer field because then QuickBooks will help us use it to generate future forms related to the sale, such as the invoice or, or uh, sales receipt for the particular customer. It'll help us to populate that information. So what's going to happen is we're going to enter a purchase order. We're then going to receive it. Uh, and, and this purchase order will help us with the receiving and the creation of the bill to pay the vendor for it. And that process will then help us to uh, generate the invoice as we do so. So we're going to basically track who we're purchasing this for. This would only happen, of course, if we can imagine someone goes into the store and says, you know, I want this particular guitar. It's not in our store right now, uh, but we'll order it for you. We'll get the custom order for you. We'll get exactly the color you want and whatnot. We'll make the custom order. And then we'll assign it in the purchase order to a particular customer. So that'll help us to track that as we go. Now I'm just going to type in the customer here. We could hit the drop down and see if they're there. There is, this is a new customer. So I typically type in the customer. You could say add new. I typically type it in and then say tab. And it's going to say, hey, we don't have that customer. Do you want to set them up? I'm going to say yes. Now, a customer is someone that we may want to go through the, the full setup, meaning I want all the information they'll give us. I want their email address. I want their phone number. I want to be able to contact them, send them our newsletter or whatnot. But in this example, we're going to give them just a quick ad to, uh, to just get the name so that we can link through it. So vendors, in other words, are oftentimes where the quick ad will use all the time because we're just paying the utility bill or the phone bill. Customers, we probably want to get the information if they'll give it to us. You know, what's the email address, what's the phone number, and whatnot. But we're going to use the quick add here, and that'll just add this system. So there's uh, the 400. That's what we want to do. I'm going to go ahead and say uh, save and new. We're going to enter another purchase order in a similar fashion. So the next item is going to be from a Gibson. We're going to order from Gibson, a, a vendor. And so, so if we select the drop down, we see that we don't have that uh, vendor here. We've never ordered a guitar from Gibson. So we can imagine someone comes into the store and says, hey, I'd like a, a Gibson guitar. Well, we're, most of our, our guitars are Epiphone guitars. So, uh, but we could, uh, you know, contact Gibson and, and get that for you. So that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to say Gibson. And we'll, so we don't have this. We could add a new vendor here. Notice what we don't have to do. We don't have to go to the vendor section and add the vendor. 
we could add it directly as we fill out the purchase order as we'll do here. So we're just gonna type in Gibson and then say tab. And when we select tab, it's gonna say, hey, we don't see that. Uh, it actually says Gibson is not a vendor. But to me, that means, hey, we don't have that vendor here. And so do you want to add it? And we're gonna give a quick add. We're gonna add it quickly. Again, we are not gonna set up all the information for Gibson. We're gonna set up the quick add at this time. And then we're gonna leave that cell blank. We're gonna to go to the custom purchase order. We're gonna keep uh, the template that it's on. If we had custom templates, we would then uh, choose the different templates here. We're gonna say that the date is gonna be the same, January 12th, 2019 purchase order, now populating automatically to 1002. This should be correct. The vendor, we have the correct vendor. Again, it would be nice to have the address. It depends how we're going to be giving them the invoice or the purchase order, if we're going to email it to them or um, or mail it to them. We've got the our shipping address. That's where we expect to receive, hopefully, the guitar that we are requesting with the purchase order. As we send these, note that, we again, we could, of course, mail it. We could send it with the email item up here. So just be aware that uh, as we record these, uh, you know, how would we send them? We have the print later here. I'm going to unprint that because we don't want to print it later. Uh, and that's going to be the default. We could email it. We could, we could send it. We can print it out to send. Okay. So we're going to say the item here. Uh, we're not going to have the item, of course, because it's a new vendor. So we don't have the, any item set up. The item we're looking for is a uh, Gibson, uh, what do we want? A Gibson SG, it's a GSB, it's gonna be our item label. And if we select the dropdown, we say, hmm, there are no, there's not there because of course we haven't, we've never set this up before, new vendor. So what we do not have to do is go up to the items list and add the items there. We can do it here as we go, as we make the purchase order, which is what we'll do now. I like to just type it in there. We could go to new, but I like to just type in this is going to be the abbreviation GSB. That's what we're going to call this thing for this guitar. It's a thing. It's a guitar for our uh, system. I'm going to say tab. And again, it says, hey, we don't have a GSB. Do you want to add it? And we're going to say, yeah, we want to add that. Now, this sh should be a screen that looks kind of familiar to the screen that we did when we entered the items. Um, so we entered the items. This will be us entering an item. This dropdown is going to give us the inventory part. That's what we want. So we want something here. We're buying inventory. If we just tab through this screen, it's going to be the item name. That's correct. Uh, the sub item. We don't have one. Manufacturer's part number. We're going to leave that blank. We're going to give the description. It's going to be a Gibson SG. And so it's a Gibson SG. We're just going to call it for the item number a GSB. So then we need the cost. The cost is going to be $5.98. And that's going to go to the cost of goods sold, meaning when we sell it, it's going to go to expense account, cost of goods sold. The vendor is going to be Gibson. I'm typing that in, but you can also, of course, select the drop down, finding Gibson, the one we just set up when we set up the purchase order. We just set it up in this field. And then we're going to have, if we keep tabbing through this, uh, that's correct, the description. And the sales price, we're going to sell it for 777.4. Interesting number. Okay, and then we're going to say tax. It will be taxable because it's going to be inventory. We're going to have to charge sales tax is what that means, sales tax. And then the income account is going to be uh, merchandise sales. And again, you could type it in there or you can select the drop down. We want the the income accounts it's an order assets liability equity income we're just calling it generic merchandise sales we could call it guitar sales we could call it gibson guitar sales we could set up different accounts for different guitar sales but we don't want too many because we we can group the sales by item so we don't really need in other words to see a bunch of different sales accounts on the income statement unless there are large segments of sales accounts that we think would be relevant on the income statement to break out there so we're going to just keep it all in merchandise sales. So that's going to be all the information we need. We're going to say OK. And there it is. So there's Gibson. We're going to order that. And we're going to say, how many are we going to order? We're just going to buy one of those. And we're buying it specifically, again, for a specific customer, which is music. And this is a new customer. So we don't have this. This customer came in and said, hey, I, you know, I'd like this guitar. And, uh, and we don't have that guitar. So we're going to order, order that for uh, the customer here and add the customer we could do so by saying add here 
in the drop down or just type in the new customer, which is music uh, stuff store. Okay, music stuff store. And then we're going to say tab. And it's going to add that. And again, if, if it's a customer, we probably want the more information. But for our purposes here, we're going to say just the quick add, just the name to fill out the form. And there's going to there's going to be it. There's the amount. I'm going to say save and close. And there we have it. Now going back to the home page, what has happened here is we've got the purchase order, and then at some point we're going to receive the inventory, receive and generally enter the bill at that time meaning we haven't recorded anything yet. If we go to the financial statements, nothing has changed. Uh, when we receive the inventory, we will then receive and record the bill. If we record a bill, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, increase accounts payable, that's what a bill does, and debit the inventory at the point that it is now in our possession. It's our inventory now. And then of course, we're gonna pay the bill uh, at some point in the future, reducing accounts payable and recording the related reduction in cash. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.